Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again. You can see a white Apple HomePod sitting right in front of me. I finally broke down, went out and bought one of these devices. So what we're going to do today, get it set up, tell you a little bit about the device, and obviously do a little bit of comparison here with some of its main competitors. So let's get going. All right, now first up, obviously there's a massive, massive differential here in terms of price when you're comparing these devices. So don't get me wrong, even though the, these are competitors, this is in a whole different class and it's expected to be in a whole different class of speaker. The other thing that we're expecting is complete and utter integration with the Apple ecosystem of products. So I have an Apple iPhone, we also have an Apple Watch here, here in the home and of course Apple TV and all of those other services you're going to be looking for Apple Music working all of those different things basically to be working with this Apple HomePod so that's really the big reason you go out and you get one of these and ultimately I think speaker quality here is tops in the industry and I'm going to show you a little bit of that here so let's get going now like I said this is a white and you can just see the device visually. There's really nothing in terms of features around the whole device. There's the power cord, which is about six feet long. And on top, there's the feature. I mean, there's really nothing here to look at. On the bottom, you do have the Apple logo. And that's really the only feature that you have on the entire device. So very clean, very nice looking device from Apple. Now really quickly, in terms of a comparison of size, you can see here next to its two main competitors that the device is relatively height-wise a little taller and obviously a lot wider. Now, the big question is, you know, when we're combining or we're comparing to the size of other devices, I'm gonna to have to move the Google Home here quite far. There is the Echo Sub right next to it. So you can see there is a fairly significant differential still there. The Echo Sub is much larger. So overall, if you're looking at one speaker or one speaker system, you can see that the Apple HomePod is still singularly going to be a lot smaller than a pair of Echoes or Echo Pluses and an Echo Sub. So let's get this plugged in and get it working. Now what I'll tell you, just from that sound that played there, uh, that is a immense speaker here. I could feel it all throughout the desk and this thing is barely on. Now as the device gets set up, you can see right there, there's a spinning light. This tells you it's basically getting ready to set up here and I have my Apple iPhone, and I'm basically just gonna keep it near to this device. Now, the official Apple instructions just say you just need to unlock your iPhone and basically have it near the Apple HomePod. So I'm going to try that here for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to move into the Apple Home, the HomeKit application, and I know there I can start the process if it doesn't just show up here on my phone. All right, so if you're like me, the process didn't automatically start up here on my Apple iPhone, so I am going to go into the home application. Once inside of there, I'm going to give it another second here and then I'm going to hit add accessory. So now that I'm inside the Apple HomePod or the HomeKit application here, I'm in my home that I've already set up and if you don't have one, it's a simple process of just naming the home. But now I'm going to hit add accessory and inside of there, you may get a little screen that shows up. I'm not anymore, so I'm going to go into don't have a code or can't scan, and as I do that, you're noticing the HomePod right there. Now, you are likely to get a screen just showing up as soon as you get this little flashing light here on top going. That little light basically says that the HomePod is ready. 
if you don't get that screen, come into the home application like I've done and you can always go through this manual method. So I'm going to tap on HomePod and then I get the screen. Now this is actually what you're supposed to get and I'm going to tap on setup. Now I'm setting it up in this new R home that I've created and I'm going to hit continue. Where is the device is my next question and I'm going to place this in the living room in the end. So I'm going to choose that. And now, do I want to enable personal requests? So this is the part where your Apple account, basically that being connected to this device is going to give you access to things like messages, phone calls, and of course your calendars and your reminders. So those are big things for a lot of people and I'm going to enable my personal request. Next up is just hitting continue on Siri and add agreeing to terms and conditions. Now, I'm going to use my cloud account. You'll notice the little icon there for Siri and for Apple Music. Now that's the big thing I think a lot of people are looking for when they buy a HomePod. So I'm going to tap on transfer settings. Now, as it's just setting up my HomePod with all my settings, this is very, very similar to what Apple normally does with their setup. It's basically a walkthrough of their screens. There's nothing really complicated here. And, you know, even for me, I had to factory reset this device because of how I purchased it. So, you know, the worst thing that you can have happen is basically Hi, that. Hi, I'm Siri. Welcome to HomePod. You can't tell, but I'm waving. To get my attention, say, hey, Siri, let's try it. Say, hey, Siri, what can you do? Hey, Siri, what can you do? I can do lots of things, like turn on the lights, give you a news update, and tell you about the weather. Now you try. Say, hey, Siri, play some music. Hey, Siri, play some music. One moment. Okay, here's a personal radio station built just for you. So there you go. Now, obviously this is all set up. I'm going to turn down the music there. Now I just wanna show you guys how this looks on the top of the device. And I think this is another thing that Apple does so well. They go ahead and they create great visual experiences. Already this device is amazing. But when I go ahead and I say, hey Siri. Hmm? So you can see that little multicolored, basically that little multicolored movement going on there. That's very similar to what you get from the Siri application, basically that icon there. And it's fitting right in line with what we see from Siri all the time. So you'll need to update the software on this HomePod before I can help with personal requests. So you just heard it there. Actually, my Apple HomePod said basically before I can do things like send messages and make phone calls, you need to go through an update. So top left in the application, you actually can tap on the home there and you'll notice speakers is now there. Now that you have this connected to your home application, you can now go through the software update process. Now it's going to go ahead and check for updates and then I go ahead and I install that and I'm able to do those personal requests. So you can see iOS 12.0 has shown up. That wasn't on this device before I got it. So now I've got to go ahead, download and install that update. All right, now I've gone ahead and I've updated my Apple HomePod. So let's go ahead and go through all of the different requests basically that you're going to want to do as you get this device set up. So we're gonna start obviously with the biggest thing that every, anyone who is going to buy an Apple HomePod is looking for and that is the music capability. So I already have an iTunes or Apple Music account rather connected. I've paid for that so you will have to do that or this is not going to work. Now as soon as you've done that and it's on that right account then you can go ahead and you can ask Siri to go and play some music. So hey Siri play Dear Rouge. Sure here's a personalized station of Dear Rouge. It's hard to see 
Now you can see right there, and you can see that I can pause it here. So you can see that I can control from the top of this device. I can also tap to restart the music. I know you can't hear that, but I can tap to start, tap to stop, and also the plus and the minus, like I showed you earlier, show up on the top of the device. I can also see in my Apple Home, the application here, I can play and I can pause from there. Now, of course, once I've started playing, like with everything, I can go in to the different settings here for my home pod. Now, once I'm in the settings, I can change what room it's in. I can go through the different music and podcast related settings. So I can change whether or not I want to kind of keep the playing history, things like that. And then I can also adjust for Siri. So I can change that it's not going to listen for Hey Siri as I go through things here. So I can change that. I can also use a touch and hold to get it to wake up. And I can also change whether or not I want that light on the top to show up. So a number of different capabilities here and down at the bottom you can see your version some of the accessibility features I'm not going to go through all of that here today there are also alarms that I can set with this device and obviously you can do that by voice as well so now let's go ahead and let's get through some of those personal requests so one of the first things is sending a message so hey Siri send a message to Elizabeth what do you want to say just a test. Your message to Elizabeth says, just a test. Ready to send it? Yes. I'll send your message. What mm -hmm. do I have on my calendar today? You have two appointments. At 4 p.m., Google Home versus Echo Plus second generation versus Echo Plus first generation. And at 5 p.m., appointment. So there you go. Those are my two appointments that I have today and I can go ahead and I can add another appointment. So, hey Siri, add an appointment to put out the garbage at 6 p.m. I scheduled your appointment for today from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The appointment is called Put Out the Garbage. Let me know if you want to make any changes. No, thank you. Okay, I won't update the event. So now just inside of my calendar here, you can see it already, and that was real time. There's no editing there. I put it in through through the Apple HomePod here and it's shown up in my calendar instantaneously on my iPhone. So that's pretty fantastic in terms of a timeline. Now on top of that, of course, we can make phone calls and this is one of the biggest features. Now, what you had to make sure you did before was those personal results. You had to make sure that you did that and you also have to make sure that this is updated to at least iOS 12.0. So, hey Siri, Make a phone call. Who do you want to call? Elizabeth. Calling now. When you're done, just say, hey Siri, hang up. Now it's shown up on my phone here, but it is showing a little green light here on the top. You have reached the voice. Hey Siri. Uh, hang up. So there you go, I did successfully make a phone call. Uh, apparently my wife doesn't wanna to talk to me right now. Uh, we'll get her at a later date on the channel. But anyways, so there you go. I've already gone ahead, I've sent a message to her. I phoned her and all of my contacts were instantly uploaded. I've gone ahead and I've created calendar entries and also had those read back to me. So all of that capability is there right out of the box. And of course, Apple Music, as long as you've gone ahead and you've connected your account. All right, well, there you go. You've seen tons of functionality here from your Apple HomePod. It's all set up in your home, and now you have access to that home application. And of course, the next time on the channel here, as we work through this device, I'm going to show you how to integrate that with home control and a number of different systems. So I'm going to show you Philips Hue. I'm going to show you the IKEA Trad Free. I'm going to show you all of the integration you can do between this HomePod and your home control elements or your different smart home products. So we'll see everyone next time and thanks for watching.